Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and today I'm going to be making my bacon jam smash burger from the South Beach Wine and Food Festival. So last month I was privileged to be invited to cook at the Food Network and Cooking Channel South Beach Wine and Food Festival in Miami, Florida. And one of the events I cooked was the Burger Bash hosted by Guy Fieri. Um, it was an awesome time. It was myself and 40 some other chefs that were cooking burgers for about 4,000 people. So um, when I was invited, I wanted to come up with something really fun and obviously it had to be delicious, but something that we could turn out fast and would catch people's attention. Uh, and the idea we came up with was the bacon jam smash burger. So this is essentially like a diner style griddle top burger, um, but has a little fun flair with the bacon jam, which we're going to get started with first. Uh, the bacon jam is really the star of the show. So here's a wide view of what the bacon jam is made up of. It's equal parts bacon and onions. And we've got some really great flavors over here in maple syrup, brown sugar, apple cider vinegar, some French pressed coffee, a little bit of thyme, garlic, and of course some eight second ride for a little bit of heat. First thing we need to do is get the bacon cooked down. So we're gonna start with the bacon. We wanna get it cooked. We wanna get it out of the skillet and leave all that fat behind so we can cook the rest of the ingredients in the bacon fat. Now essentially what we're gonna try and do is cook all this down into a thick syrupy mixture that we can then pulse in the food processor and it comes out the consistency of jam. All right, so medium heat we're cooking the bacon over. And we just wanna give this time to render the fat out, start to get nice and brown. Now if you're realizing that bacon jam is not a quick process and that may not fit in like a live fire situation, um, that's true. I actually made all of the bacon jam ahead of time here at All Things Barbecue, and I flew with it. I had a suitcase full of bacon jam. I got there to weigh, weigh my suitcase because I've got a soft side cooler and you know some ice packs, and it was 75 pounds. 75 pounds with bacon jam. Um, it was not cheap to fly. <laughs> all that to say that uh, you can actually make this ahead of time at home as well. Put it in the fridge and pull it out when you need it. Warm it up or serve it cold. It's good on toast. It's good on burgers. It's good on sandwiches. I'm sure you'll find plenty of uses for it. All right, so there's about 10, 15 minutes in. Our bacon's all browned up. I'm just gonna move it off to the side here. There will be no shortage of uh, bacon fat in this recipe, so it's all right to drain this onto a paper towel and get rid of a little a little bit of that excess. All right, so we leave the bacon fat behind and now we're gonna cook down our onions. So we had a pound of bacon, now we've got a pound of sliced onions. Again, medium heat. And we just want these to soften and cook down similar to the way the bacon did. And then we can begin to build our jam from there. And then we're gonna add about a tablespoon of the Cattleman's Grill eight second ride. This will provide us with just a little bit of back end heat. It's, uh, it's nothing too aggressive. It really adds just another element, another level of depth to the condiment. All right, so five, 10 minutes, these onions should be softened. All right, these onions are almost translucent, cooked down plenty soft, so let's add in now some garlic. About one tablespoon of minced garlic. At the same time here, I'm gonna add in a half cup of brown sugar. And we'll just give this stuff about 30 seconds to sort of melt down. That garlic's gonna open up and get aromatic. And here shortly, we can add the rest of our liquids. Now we're gonna add in a half cup of maple syrup, and a half cup of apple cider vinegar. And then we want about a half cup of coffee. One last thing, just a quarter teaspoon of dried thyme. All right, so we'll bring this to a simmer, turn it to medium low, and just let it slowly cook down. And as it's simmering, it's all right to go ahead and return 
the bacon to the skillet and let that cook down with the rest of the jam. All right, when we get back to this, it should be nice and syrupy, and we'll go over the consistency when we know that it's finished. It's been about 20 minutes that our jam's been cooking down, and I wanna show you guys now just how to know that it's finished cooking. You can see these sugar bubbles down here. As they get larger, that means that it's cooked, the sugar is cooked down further. And then if you run your spoon right through here, you'll see that that starts to fill in very slowly. And that's an indicator that this is cooked down to just the right consistency. So if you're running your spoon through here and everything just comes back together immediately, not ready yet. We can turn the heat off now and let this cool a bit before we put it in the food processor. Now this jam's cooled down just a little bit, so we're gonna throw it into the food processor and pulse it up. Now this part's totally up to you how you want the consistency to come out. If you want it smoother, that's totally fine. Obviously it's really chunky right now, so it's a good idea to break it down at least just a little bit. That's still pretty chunky. Personally, I think I'll go just a little bit finer. Yeah, that's nice. It's got some texture. It's not totally pureed, but uh, at the same time, it's broken down enough to spread on a bun. I'm gonna give this a taste and see if we need to adjust anything. Nope, it's right on the money. All right, so we've got the bacon jam knocked out, but there's a few more components to the burger. Next, I wanna get into the patty itself, which today we're doing quarter pound patties that we're gonna cook on the griddle. And these patties consist of ribeye steak and chuck roast. If you're doing some store-bought beef, I would recommend an 80-20 blend in this situation. As we scale these out and move them off to the side, we're just gonna keep them in a ball for now because we're not gonna form them into a patty until they hit the griddle. And that's where the smash burger portion of this recipe comes in. We're gonna use the grill weight to form a thin, crispy patty, which means these are gonna go really fast on the griddle. Before we grill off our burgers, we're going to uh, toast these buns off. And I'm just gonna hit them with a little bit of mayonnaise. This works just like butter when you're toasting buns. So just a little bit of fat on the surface, spread that around, and that'll give you a really nice crispy bun. Today we're cooking these burgers and toasting our buns on the Weber griddle inside the Yoder Smokers YS640. It's running at 450 degrees, set up for direct grilling. And this is exactly what we're looking for. We've got our potato rolls all toasted off. We can set those aside. And here's the setup for the next part of the cook, right? So we've got our burgers at a quarter pound portioned out. We've got some oil for the griddle. We've got some Cattleman's tri-tip that's here in the grinder so we can get it nice and fine. You're gonna need a spatula and then our cream Havarti, which we're gonna throw on after we flip these. All right, so a little bit of oil. Put your burger down. And it helps if you got a piece of parchment paper you can squish that down as flat as you can. And we're just gonna leave it on there for about five seconds. And we'll go to the next one. So as soon as you pull that off, you can get that side seasoned with the tri-tip. All right, so this has been on for less than a minute. We're starting to get a crust, but we need a little bit more on there, so we'll leave it to keep going. So you're really not abiding by any time right now. You're just looking for color and crust on your burgers. If it's still sticking like this one is, it's not ready, there's no way. Now, especially when you know you've got a well-oiled surface, 
that meat is going to let you know when it's ready to flip. If it's not releasing yet, it's not ready. You just gotta wait until it releases itself and forms that nice little crust. This is just right. See, we've got even browning all over the surface, but it's not too dark. All right, I've got these flipped over now. We're gonna get seasoning on the opposite side. And then as soon as we get our seasoning down, hit it with the uh, Havarti. All right, so just a couple minutes on each side. This burger is cooked all the way through. We've got some nice crust on it. We've got a ton of melted cheese. These things are ready to come off the griddle. Let's quickly go down the list. The bacon jam is done. The burgers are cooked. We've got all that melted cheese on top. The buns are toasted. There's one last thing, and that's our secret sauce, which obviously not that secret because we're gonna tell you how to make it, but three parts mayonnaise to two parts chipotle ketchup from Big Rick's. That's it. That's the whole experience. That's the whole bacon jam smash burger, the diner burger experience. Now let's build these burgers, starting with about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of bacon jam on the bottom bun. Then we've got the burger patty still hot from the griddle. Now a drizzle of our special sauce. And there it is, the bacon jam smash burger in all its greasy diner burger glory. Mm. The flavor is huge. It's such a simple burger, but the flavors are all over the place. You obviously get the bacon, it's salty, it's smoky, but it's sweet from all that maple syrup and brown sugar and just a little bit of earthiness from the coffee. And that cheese is everywhere. I love the big slices of the cream Havarti. Those two things together just make this magical on such a simple burger. It's got big flavor, it's got big texture, and it's Guy Fieri, fist bump approved. It tastes like a diner burger. It tastes like that. I'm there at about three in the morning, and I'm getting all of it. <laughs> Well done. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all of the products featured in today's video. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below. And hey, let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to thesauce.atbbq.com. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.